Oh, there he is. Well, we are, we are live. Um, uh, just as, as a warning to everyone, uh, I got a little notice at the beginning when I hit start broadcast. It said we only have eight hours of broadcast time left. So, um, you know, be, be, <laughs> keep it pithy if you can. Um, uh, anyhow, welcome everyone to our Outsports uh, YouTube Live Google Hangout. I want to do more of these where we talk to people who are in sports, LGBT people in sports, about different issues affecting the sports world, not just our community. And it was a couple of weeks ago when I was thinking about, as much of the country has been, thinking about the national anthem and what's appropriate or inappropriate to do during the national anthem. And I, I went to Twitter uh, to see what Connor thinks about it, and I didn't see much. And uh, I wanted to invite him on to, the, to, to have, just have a conversation about it, about the issue. And, and also wanted to bring in Coach Julie Shaw, who I was from Laverne, which I was fortunate enough to see last weekend or two weekends ago, whenever that was. Um, I was doing a football game at her college, and she was nice enough to come and say hello. Um, so please welcome Connor and Julie. Thank you both for joining us. Thanks for having us. My, my, my first question, very nice flags in the background, Connor. He's got the American flag right next to the uh, 12th man flag. He's got his two priorities, America and the Seahawks. That's We've been over this. God bless America and God bless the Seahawks. <laughs> well, they're, they're not blessing the Seahawks. Uh, well, anyhow, we won't get into the injury report like we did off the air. Um, <laughs> actually, you guys played Colin Kaepernick this past weekend, and he and a couple of his teammates – um, knelt during the game. I don't think any Seahawks have been kneeling during the uh, during the national anthems, have they, Connor? No, the Seahawks are doing a different sign of unity. The as a team and an organization, they're standing on the sideline, linked in arms all together. Um, so same concept, same same institution, just a different way of showing it. So I, I'm I'm curious, just kind of generally, like when when this first started bubbling up, it was about a month ago, maybe six weeks ago. Kaepernick, uh, you know, was first sat on the bench during the national anthem, and then after talking with a member of the military, decided uh, that he wanted to kneel instead. Um, just kind of your general thoughts about how you felt about it when it first, when you first saw what was going on, Julia. What, what did what did you think off the bat? I think honestly, um, I didn't know. To be quite frank, I didn't know what. Just to kind of about. generally, like when. And to this, where it was, even to this day, it's taking me a while to wrap my head around it. I feel like I have a bigger grasp of it now. Um, but I, I knew that um, it was something where it was his way of trying to take action. And I think everybody right now is trying to find their own way to take an action. And um, whether you know, some deem it as bad or good or in between. But I think that was just his way where he felt there was a point where he needed to do something and didn't know what that was quite yet. And I think maybe that's why he originally just sat down because he knew that would be an ultimate statement. Um, and especially in athletics, uh, people are huge figures and even a small gesture can make a huge statement. Uh, but but I think where it's progressed, because at first I thought, how long is this going to last and what impact is Colin Kaepernick by himself going to have? So it's been really neat to see the domino effect and ripple effect that's been creating this change, because I think it was even, sorry, there's my motion detector, but even, um, even last night, um, I believe there was a game between the Atlanta Falcons and the, and the Saints, and to see how that's grown and now it's a unity circle. And I think it's even what Connor was saying, you know, people are finding their ways to express um, themselves. And I think I loved that to see where we've come from people being so, you know, disgruntled at, at Colin Kaepernick to now where we're seeing teams join in and try to have a bigger purpose. Yeah, Connor, did you, I mean, I know you hate Colin Kaepernick because he plays for the 49ers and, and team loyalty trumps everything else. But um, um, did you, did you did, I'd be curious, like as a Seahawks fan, did you initially hate what he was doing or did you, did you kind of get it right away? Well, here's the thing is like, I've, I've kept my mouth shut because this is like such a historic moment in our lives. And I've been really wanting to sit back and watch and observe rather than, 
I, I don't know. This is, I think that we're at such a pivotal point in in, in our like our history and our and our and the future of our in our country that for me to try and like step up and be a giant part of this is just a little bit much for me. So I'm trying to sit back and, and observe really. Um, so when it happened, uh, I thought like if I would have said anything, like I, I completely first off agree with the message and the and the and 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 the way he chose to 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 show it. Um, but I've been keeping my mouth shut, and it and it's been interesting to see uh, how different players are reacting around and around the NFL and the, and and just in general because I think that the the entire conversation around this is speaking to a narrative uh, around the country in general um, and, and the and the attitudes that that our our entire country faces. Um, I think I'd be kind of a hypocrite if I was complaining about somebody using the the sports atmosphere as a as a way to make social change. Um, I think that. Sports are the most one of, is one of the most powerful weapons we have against you know all the atrocities that we have in our in our world and, and if history has shown us anything it said that sports can be a catalyst for social change. Um, Jackie Robinson didn't stand for the the Pledge of Allegiance or uh, the the anthem when he was going through uh, the MLB and and now his number hangs in our in our stadiums and we have people and we have days named that and, and, and days dedicated to him. Uh, we, uh, you think about J uh, John Carlos, Tommy Smith during the national anthem at the Olympics. They they rose their hands as Black Power, and that was so pivotal. I, if you see that picture and you don't get chills, you, I mean you're doing it wrong. And and uh, and so the the national anthem and sports as as a as a vehicle has been used for social change forever, and 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 it'll continue to be so because it is such a uniting factor that we can hopefully put aside a lot of the things that make us different. And unite on the fact of sports and bring us together in that sort of way. So, uh, I don't support Colin Kaepernick on the field, but uh, when he's <laughs> when he's taking a knee for and, stand, and, and standing for standing up for what he believes in, um, I completely, you know, he. It, it's just it's it's again, you can't fight a lot of the atrocities in, in the world without observing all of them. So you, you see people like Megan Rapino also taking a knee. Um, and hers is uh, a little bit different. She she has the same mindset, uh, similar mindset to Kaepernick in that she feels a little, uh, a little. She feels uh, uh, disadvantaged uh, as well. She is disadvantaged because she's LGBT. We we are, and so she's also bringing to to light the same issues that the 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 dichotomy and the hypocrisy of standing and pledging and and, and you know yeah. saying these things to the flag when really the flag doesn't represent us. Yeah, I, I think it's it's even for me this whole you know situation has been the why, and I think even in sports as coaches or even when I'm talking to my players, it's like what is your why, and that's a that's a huge you know phrase that goes around in athletics, and I think explain that Julie explain what that means. Um, it's it's just your purpose, you know, you know what what are your, what do you, what are your values? Like what moves you, what drives you, you know, in the end, like, why are you doing this? You know, it's like, why do you play your sport? Why do you have such passion? Why do you make all these sacrifices for, for a sport? You know, it's like, we always have to question ourselves as athletes and as coaches, what, what is our why? And, um, and, you know, for me as a coach, my why are the young women that I get to help develop. And I think, you know, when Kaepernick takes a knee or any other athlete takes a knee or, or does an act like this, we, I think that's the root of it. That's what it's been for me is finding out why. And I think as a society, we aren't communicating to figure out, you know, why are people, you know, rioting in the streets? Why are people dying? You know, what is going on? And we need to find out each other's whys and understand that. And I think, you know, Connor and I were, t were talking earlier off the air, and I hope you talk a little bit more on that, is, is just, you know, it's not necessarily politics. It's, it's a human issue. And we need to understand each other as humans. And, um, and, of course, people see, like, hey, maybe politics is the way out of it. But I think as a society, this is a huge issue. This is a human issue. It's a society issue. And we need to understand why things are happening and why people are doing the things that they're doing. And when and the problem is, is when you call it politics, it dehumanizes it. And no, we're no longer dealing with people and humans and souls and, and, and real 
issues that are concrete. We're dealing with policy and paper, and it really makes a separation between people. And I think that's a giant problem that we have is we it, – it's not a political statement. It's, it's, when, when somebody says that my life matters, that's, that shouldn't be considered a radical political idea. <laughs> Isn't it out of control, Connor? That's crazy. <laughs> I know. I, I, there's rioters in my in my my front yard now. It's just it's it's it, it does that that that's so that's so crazy to me that that if by wearing uh if you have a shirt that says Black Lives Matter, you're suddenly a political like figure that that's a giant political statement. It's not like how can how can we say that being that somebody's life carries inherent value is politics. That's that's the definition of humanity, and and I don't. I just I, I get really uncomfortable when when this narrative is based in policy and politics rather than human life and and things that are, well, are on that nature. You know what? I, unfortunately, our media has trained us to look at these things, and our politicians have trained us to look at these things as political, as as red and blue, as black and white, as good and bad, as right and wrong. Everything is everything is political, and and how are you going to donate to candidates and show up at, at the voting booth? Like that's. That's how we've been trained to look at all of these issues. Um, I, I was disappointed when uh, Ron, Ron Rivera, the coach of the Panthers, was asked about this a few days before they were playing the 49ers, and he said he essentially said, "Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get involved in politics. Keep, keep, keep politics out of sports." And I was like, "That, that is such a, that is such a cop out." Um, and 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 this, like you said, Connor, this isn't politics it's it's more than politics it with, with it's patriotism it's uh racism it's classism it's so many different things that go beyond just you know who are you voting for at the voting booth and are the republicans or the democrats going to win this conversation so I, I i was disappointed to hear ron rivera paint this as as a political issue and and, and i am yeah I, I i had the same thing like not a political issue here. It's yeah. it's. I also think it, like just the whole idea that port, sports has the power to just transcend so many different boundaries that that usually divide people, um, and it has just this this just immense power. You look at the tragic tragic uh, passing of Jose Fernandez just has sparked this uh, league wide you know outpouring of love and support, and it's it's it, that's just another example of how you can't separate humanity from sports. And, and, and the problem is, is when, when you have coaches saying, I don't want to be political, I don't separate politics, we're going back to the issue of people's lives mattering isn't an issue of politics. And so uh, I think we need to learn to embrace, and we need to learn to embrace humanities, uh, the humanities part of, of athletics. So I, I want to get back to very specifically the, the national anthem. What, what generated this whole, um, de de well, I didn't generate the debate. It generated the debate about what to do with the national anthem, but it contributed to the conversation about, about racism and, 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 uh, and, and classism in the United States. Um, and, and so, Julie, I I'm curious with the season approaching, have you thought about how you're going to address this with your team? You know, some, some coaches, like Jeff Fisher, has, the head coach of the Rams, got in front of his team and said, I want you all to stand. Mm -hmm. uh, and other coaches have have kind of allowed their their players to do what they want. Have you thought about how you're going to approach it? Like I said before, this issue is huge because I I can say one, I'm probably you know one of the most most diverse people. You know, I'm woman, LGBT. I'm half black, half Filipino. You know, my mom you know, came over here from the Philippines. My dad served in the military for, for 20 years. Um, my niece is currently serving. So this issue really touches me on so many different levels. Um, but as a coach, I would love to support, you know, my players in, in this. And that's how I feel right now, even, even just thinking about everything we're discussing. Uh, but with that said, I would really want to have a conversation with them about it uh, because I would want to make sure that um, they really understood, you know, and that they could explain to me and, and, and tell me exactly, again, their why, 
Like, tell me why that this is important to you and, and I want to make sure. And, and those come with other issues that they might bring to my table or other questions they might have because even helping them grow, I want them to, to understand it as well and to where now we can now have an open conversation with our team and be a team around that because I, I do think opening up that conversation with our team, we're going to have to make sure we have a, a good support system around that because, again, they're going to have to understand they might get backlash from fans. They might get backlash from other teams. Um, so I think it wouldn't just be me and one player. We would have to take everybody into consideration on that. But I would welcome that so that we could have continued discussions on it um, so that we could help, you know, and have that ripple effect, you know, not just with our team, but then now maybe it's going to affect all the other teams in our department. And then now it's going to affect our conference and see how that can happen. Because I think for somebody to be a part of a movement, um, that would be amazing. Connor, if, if you were playing this season, would you be kneeling during the National <laughs> Anthem of Games? Wow, that's a good question. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I didn't expect to answer that one. Um, that's, that's, that is very... That's a tough one. I haven't actually thought about much about it. Um, I, uh, of course, believe in the the cause, and but I, I again, I think that I probably would have, um, I probably would take something similar route to the uh, the Seahawks, and I would probably try to make it more of a uh, all encompassing team thing. But I want to absolutely uh, stand up, and, and and again, this is this is it, it, that's this right here is an exact. Um, byproduct of what Colin Kaepernick has done. We're sitting here talking about it, and we're he he created discussion and 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 good or bad discussions finally happening, and and, we're, and it's finally and it's finally it's finally being done. And so whatever way that happens, that's that's a good way. So for me, if I would be kneeling, um, I'm not sure. My my coach is Canadian, so maybe he'd be okay with it. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but I, 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 I honestly, I, I, I can't answer that. It's, um, and at the same time, like, I, I agree, uh, I'm always, I think it's always super important to acknowledge our, our place and our, our privilege and our, and our, and where we come from. And so as, as a white cisgender male, uh, it, it almost, uh, and this is something that I, I actually don't have clarity on. And I'd love to talk to, uh, more of my friends, uh, involved in the Black Lives Matter movement, because I, I feel like it's, it's almost out of my place to participate and to be part of kneeling. I know that I want to contribute, but I don't want to make the focus about me. And so uh, that's something that I'd love to talk about with and open more of a discussion about is how as an ally in this situation, besides standing up and saying, yes, I agree with it. The, the, the message is on point. We need to be listening rather than trying to fight this. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what my space looks like as a, as, as a, no. as a white person in, in the narrative of uh, racial injustice in the United States. And see, I, I, I'm glad you said that because then that makes me think, you know, just with different movements in the civil rights movements that, you know, there, there were, you know, white people that were walking alongside in the marches and, and doing that. But that is a very interesting question because, you know, um, Rapino did it but I don't know if there was any conversation about her being a white female um, doing it. And I, I know right now, I don't know if it's just media, but they're only showing, you know, the people of color that are doing it. Um, and so that, that's very interesting to me, you know, and, and what an impact that would have um, with if everything. But, the world would uh, lose their mind if a Tom Brady takes his knee or, you or know, it would, but, but to me, but, but that goes, that goes back to, I mean, it's interesting for me, obviously, sitting here, a black female with two white males <laughs> talking about this issue and, you know, not to discuss, you know, issues of, of white privilege and of the black experience. Uh, that, goes, that goes way deep and that goes into history and that goes into us knowing our history and, you know, why we are the way we are today. You know, for, for me, I've, I've been even grappling around my head is just, you know, how do people see black males? Because I do think that's, that's what it is right now. It's, it's a lot of things that you're seeing, right? It's, it's black males getting killed. And it's like, how are we viewing the black men in our society? 
Um, and um, it's just being brought back up again. And this is, this is our history. And I think maybe we've ignored it. Maybe we've gotten to a place where we thought everything was okay. But now it's all coming to the surface. And I think that's what happens with everything. When you try to ignore it, when you try to suppress it, there's going to come a day where everything explodes. And then now you have to deal with it. And I think maybe that's the point that maybe Colin Kaepernick got to. Um, and I mean, I love Jesse Williams, the actor, and just how he's been speaking out um, with everything too. And so I think it's gotten to a point where people Oh, wow. I froze for a minute there. <laughs> um, you know what's interesting? When I, when I first saw this, um, I, I was, first of all, I, I never, I'm not just not bothered by what people want to do during the national anthem. Some people leave their hats on. Some people can't be bothered to stand. Some people, uh, you know, are kneeling now, this raised. Uh, and, and, and the outrage that I, I saw was, to me, uh, so ridiculously over the top. You know, I had family members who fought in world wars and the Korean War, um, and, and, and two grandfathers who fought in World War II. Their, their memory is not diminished because Colin Kaepernick, uh, <clears throat> you know, wants to sit or kneel during the national anthem. Don't you think in a way it enhances their memory because he's, those people fought and died for him to be able to protest. And so he's, he's, their, their, their lives, if they lost their lives trying to defend his, his first, his, his constitutional rights. And if he's not, and if, if he, if he's not using them, then wouldn't those rights be going to waste? It's just, it, it depends on your side. Of the, it depends on the view of the argument, because believe me, I'm the, uh, as you can tell, I'm j I, I love USA. I, I'm biggest supporter of our troops. My, my cousin, he was an army ranger. He was my biggest hero growing up. Um, and, but I just think that, like, it's exactly what you said, and I think you phrased it really well. It's like those lives and, 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 and the honor of the military isn't diminished because we're saying that we need to pay attention to these other uh, – we need to pay attention to issues that make us American. It, division doesn't make us American. Uh, racism doesn't make us American. What, bring, what makes us American is our diversity, I and mean, we're a melting pot, and that's what makes us amazing. And, and so to bring us together is the way to be. To answer your question really quickly, and then I'll get Julie's take on this, I don't think it enhances it. I, I do think that the standing for the national anthem or, or the playing of the national anthem is a, a moment of celebration of unity, and I think it's not a surprise that we do it before sporting events. This moment of unity is right before we want our two teams to go and kill each other, right? So I think that there's, you know, for me, I would not use the national anthem as uh, as uh, as a, um, a means to protest because I, I just think it, I would use, there, Colin Kaepernick has many other opportunities to speak his mind and do things um, that w would get attention. Again, I'm not, I don't, I'm not saying that it's bad that he did, I just, I don't think it enhances the, the memory of my grandfather or, or the, the meaning because he chose this one moment to do it. There are lots of other moments to do it. Um, does that make sense? I don't, does that make sense? I'm not, I don't think it's not bad. I don't, I don't feel negatively about it at all. I just don't, I don't feel positively about it. I just feel kind of like, eh, about it. But I am glad that it is generating this broader conversation. Yeah. It's interesting because I'm, I might be playing devil's advocate here because um, I'm, I'm reflecting on what you're saying and then what Connor is saying that, but to me, in, in my head, like when I think Connor, you were saying that like racism isn't America, but to me, the first thing that popped in my head, I, I'm going to say, yes, it is because I want to say that it's been in our history forever. In our constitution. And, yeah. And yeah, Exactly. So, so for me, it is what it's been founded on and, and that's what we have to, re and that's what go, why I go back to what I said before is we want to think everything's okay, but it's not. And, um, and I think rather than dealing with the issue and being that honest, being that honest that like, yes, racism is America. So now what are we going to do about it? 
and how frank are we going to be with each other about it and um, understand everybody's experiences uh, and how that is affecting uh, everyone in this nation um, because you know everybody's talking about it and um, and we have to continue to um, yeah I probably should have phrased that a little bit better I completely agree that it's like it's just a deeply so deeply embedded into our society that uh, but I was thinking American idealism exceptionalism my sort of concepts of we're all one person instead of the reality so you're 1,000 percent right I apologize for that so phrasing. Here so, here, so something that Connor said about, um, you know, him kneeling for the national anthem and should he, has, as, as a white man, do that. So Megan Rapino, like you said, Julie, she, she knelt for the national anthem, I, I think, in part of solidarity with Colin Kaepernick and also as an LGBT woman, a gay woman in America, saying, well, yeah, I, 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 I have problems too. And it's funny, like, it struck me as... I have, I have more negative feelings about what she did than what he did because it almost felt like all lives matter, right? It almost felt like, okay, well, there's this thing going on and Colin Kaepernick created this conversation about, about or contributed to the conversation um, about what's going on for black America. And then here's this white woman saying, well, me too, I'm gay and I've been discriminated against too and I'm gonna kneel too. It, it, it felt like she was almost, I mean, I don't think she intended to, but it felt like she was co-opting this moment to focus on this one thing, and then she kind of like muddies the water. I, I don't know. That, that was my reaction to it. Actually, I didn't. I, 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 I yeah. That, that, that's it. I just, I just don't feel super positively about what she did, whereas I, I felt more positive about what he did. Interesting. I would feel positive about what she did because I see it's a, it's, it's another impact that he's having. Yeah, it could be a different way. And, and, but how many times have we seen other movements, you know, happen because another movement started, like we're all connected. And I think that's the idealism that, that Connor was talking about, you know, like that is the idealism of America that we're all connected. So, like, now if you could take Colin Kaepernick is now affecting Rapino, who I think the, the kneeling during the National Anthem, since it has been so impactful, it takes a lot of guts for somebody to do that on such a big stage. And, you know, and as athletes, if we can use our voice, if we can use our actions, you know, to help affect change, then, like, why not? Because it, if, it, if, if it's all about, you know, um, having your yourself heard speaking for others because it's it truly is silence what what kills generations you know it's it's the silence of of many you know throughout history that has led us to a lot and until you speak out then um then there won't be any change created so i, I don't think we can be so hard on on rapino for doing that and yeah you can say oh maybe she was trying to piggyback off of it and capitalize off of it but if it's something that's moving towards a good and to bring light to an issue, then, you know, I think, because maybe, maybe underneath it all, she was like, wow, like that was a good role model for me to do something. And now I'm going to do something, but it's also not to say maybe she also stands in agreement with him as well to show that solidarity, but also a solidarity amongst athletes. Um, too, because it's been really interesting for me to see other teams and other athletes do it to show that solidarity. Because at first, I'm not going to lie, I, I was like, this is not going to catch on. Like Colin Kaepernick, this this is not going to go over well. Well, I, I, I just want to know things before we jump in, Connor. One, I don't, I don't mean now to... Now it's not just one person, he's joining hands. I didn't mean to say that I'm, I'm, I'm critical of repeating. Yeah. Just kind of like, okay. it, there was just... It, I don't know, it just made me feel funny when she did it. That's, I don't mean to say that she was wrong. It was just like, oh, I don't know, that, that just didn't feel right for whatever reason, right? Um, uh, the other piece is that it's interesting, it really hasn't caught on. Like there are actually very, very, very few people kneeling, a kne certainly kneeling or sitting. Um, I, I've been watching all the high school and college games that I've been doing uh, as a referee in Southern California not a single player or coach has, has, at high school or college that I've worked has sat or knelt because I've been looking. And I, in addition to that, I haven't seen any locked arms or raised fists or any of that. 
So, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe it's as it morphs, it becomes more safe, right? They're making it safer. It's, it's a lot safer to raise your fist or lock arms than it is to kneel. So um, maybe that will catch on. Maybe, maybe that part will catch on. But the kneeling, it's, it's, it's not catching on, even though it's generating a conversation. I got nothing to add to that. I did want to say something about uh, so, uh, just a little bit earlier uh, about the because the Megan Rapinoe thing and and Julie had a really good point and I just wanted to to also point out that Megan said that she was standing in solidarity with Kaepernick. So so mm -hmm. I think that she was using her position as a white as a as a uh, her her position of power as a white person to point to she used her privilege to point towards underprivilege uh, to to point towards uh, underrepresentation. So. I think that if she would have, but the, but in her interviews and stuff, she did make a point to say that she was uh, that she she stood with what Kaepernick was standing for, and that she wanted that. So so it wasn't like a all eyes on me appropriate. It was uh, I just think that it was uh, she she was definitely using her privilege to to uh, you know make the narrative more. I think more her taking a knee may have expanded the audience to this whole concept and they're, they're like she might have reached a concept that or uh, uh, a a uh, audience that, that, might have been, that might not have been demographic that might not have been reached before and so i think that that's super important when we're in positions of privilege to point and uh, use that privilege that we have to lift up other voices that are unheard sorry that was, that was just something that i, that I didn't yes. get to add before we moved on absolutely it's a good point well, one of the things that came out uh, today or yesterday was, um, and of course, Sports Illustrated very smartly wrote a slightly misleading headline, which essentially said, Carly Lloyd essentially tells Megan Rapinoe she's being um, a distraction or, 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 or something like this. And what Carly Lloyd actually said was that she stands with Megan Rapinoe and what she's doing. And yes, this is causing a bit of a distraction for her teammates and her coaches. Um, but we're, 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 we're adults and we can deal with it. It's what we talk about with an athlete coming out. You're adults. You can deal with a couple extra questions from reporters. Um, but it was interesting to me to see this headline flash across Twitter. Carly Lloyd criticizes Megan Rapino, And that's not what she said. She said she totally understands it and gets it and stands with her. It's just, it's a little, it's just a little distracting and we're dealing with it. Uh, but is, yeah. And, that, and that's the thing is, uh, I think it's there's people dying in the streets. So if we're worried about distractions, I think we have things that are more important to worry about. Yeah. Well, anyhow, um, thank you both for joining. Anything else that you wanted to add before we before we close out here? Thanks for starting the conversation, Sid. Glad. Thanks for having us. We we are not starting the conversation. Sorry, I meant, <laughs> we're just now having a conversation about it. We're the only people talking about. Um, no, actually, I, I, I'm sorry. There is one. There is one other thing that I wanted to ask about, actually, and, and and it does go off of what I talked about. Is it is it appropriate for for LGBT athletes or coaches to now kind of follow this lead and say, well, yeah, we're discriminated against too, and not in not in a like, oh, look at us too now, but you know, standing like Rapino said, standing in solidarity with Kaepernick and and uh, the black community. Um, I'm discriminated against too. I have issues with America, so I'm going to kneel too. Is that appropriate? You asked uh, Julie. You talked about the what is it? What's your why? If that's your why, because you're LGBT and you're being discriminated against. Is that is that a bad reason to kneel during the national anthem because of what the conversation has um, you know grown around this action? Um. You know, that's that's a huge question because I think it goes back to even what Connor was talking about. You know, it's like we're all Cuban. So whether I identify as LGBT, black, you know, Filipino, female, whatever, whatever it is, I think it comes down to if it is that strong in your heart to do that as a human and, and that's your why, then, you know, and that's your passion and, and you want to um, – you know, stand for something, then, then by all means, go for it, you know, create that change that way. But I think everybody has their own different way to make an impact. I don't think it needs to be a call to action to where it's like, hey, everybody, like, let's, let's start doing this. Because it, it is, it's going to be what's going to be good for you. And I think
you know, how I talk to people about the coming out process is it's going to be different for everybody. You know, everybody might want to be strong enough to come out, but until you're ready and until, um, you know, you know that that's something that you want to do, then, then by all means go for it. But that's, that's kind of how I feel on it. I don't know. That, that's a, that, again, that's a tough one. Uh, I, I, I don't think that it's a, I, I don't think, again, I, I, I go back to what I said earlier. It's just like, um, I, I would feel like I was trying to, I, I just don't know if that's my place, uh, and, and to kneel essentially. I think that different forms of expression are used. It'd be, it, it, I think of like, uh, the Black Black Panther, like uh, Black Pride fist. It, you don't see the, the the LGBT movement taking the fist. That's not appropriate. We can't use that and be like, you're, you're not a Black Panther, Connor. I'm no, not a Black Panther. Black Panther. Black Panther. Not. You are not a Black Panther. Despite popular belief, not a Black Panther. Um, but but it, but it's the same concept. I think that it, it'd be inappropriate for a movement to say, oh, the the fist stands for uh, unity and it stands for. Uh, pride and strength and all these things that that represents my community too let me we're gonna our, our community is gonna take the fist and we're gonna that's gonna be that's gonna stand for our community as well and so there, there's that thing to me as well um but I, but i definitely think that uh that opening the conversation and using and using sports and maybe the national anthem as a vehicle is completely within people's uh it, it should be it, it, it shouldn't be as criticized as it is um, I, I also do have like this really weird like problem with people that work in or that people that advocate for one social minority or or ethnic minority, but that they, they they like oppose another one, and it just it, it doesn't make sense to me because if your heart's in the right place and you're doing it for the right reasons, it's not you, you should understand you, like the whole concept of all lives matter. All lives can't matter until Black lives matter. All lives can't matter until queer lives matter. All lives. Can't. So so I think that that you know for i think that if we all kind of like the message is kind of is relatively similar but but to steal the action is it's it's a little inappropriate <laughs> sorry connor you froze with your forehead like sticky right on the <laughs> of course yeah. but i don't know I, I hope i didn't miss anything important there but basically that all lives can't matter until black lives matter queer lives matter that and so all those lives matter and then that uh that this is a way that people are using to bring attention to that and however they want to do that. It, that's, you know, that's completely up to them. Cool. Well, I, I thank you both for joining me. Uh, Julie, I look forward to, uh, to seeing what happens with your season and, 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 and hearing about the conversations. I know you can't really talk to your players right now, but the conversations that you have as a team come November yeah. kind of thing. So I hope you'll, you'll kind of check back and, and, and let us know. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this opens it up for more. So um, I'm always happy to talk to them about anything. So it'll be a good conversation. Good. All right. Well, well, thank you both for joining us. And we'll definitely do this again. Um, go Patriots. Get out of here. <laughs> bye, guys. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>